Welcome everyone and welcome to this week's LMP2 track guide. We are at Road Atlanta for IMSA this week and what a tricky track this is for the LMP2. It's not particularly long. Um, lap times are around the 1 minute 9, 10 mark and it's got some nasty curbs here and um, they're bad enough in a GTE or GT3 car let alone in the LMP2 car, which hates curbs, um, which I'm sure you guys who have raced this car already have found out. Now, this uh, qualifying is gonna be very important here. Um, so your one lap pace is important because uh, where it's a short track, traffic is gonna come into play so much. It's not the easiest track to overtake on. Um, and especially when traffic gets involved, there's only really the short straight as you're seeing on screen now um, into the two right handers and then the back straight. The rest of the track is quite difficult to overtake on. Of course, you've got the main start straight as well, but that, um, that likewise is just very short. So very twisty turny, short track. So starting from the front is gonna be essential here, but as always, there will be some offs and people will have spins. They will lose it because these curbs are so menacing. So uh, I would say it's essential to watch my track analysis of my flying lap this week, not just the flying lap. Um, as always, there's a little bit of time that I could have gained. I could have got down into the 108s. My optimum is a 108.6, but the actual lap time I set was a 109 dead. So room for improvement, but I think that will be pretty much up there for most of the qualifying sessions this week. Uh, but yeah, as always, guys, I really hope you enjoy this. Uh, I hope it takes plenty of time off your lap times, makes you more consistent. I am using the Craig Setup Shop um, setup for this week so feel free to join my discord in the link in the description below i'll be sharing the setup in there for you guys and yeah i hope you guys enjoy remember to hit that like and subscribe button turn those notifications on and let's head into it So guys, let's have a look at that lap, shall we? We are heading down the start-finish straight. 
and we are going to roll it through and I'm going to pause it just here for you guys because the 100 board marker has just gone past on our left hand side and what we are keeping an eye out for is the grass here. In particular, where it ends, where it meets the concrete patch. Now, or the concrete, shall I say, it's not really a patch, it's a big patch, isn't it? It's just a track. Um, where this ends, this is your braking marker. Uh, this is a very fast corner here. A lot of trail braking is required uh, to carry a lot, as much speed as you can, but as well as being in control of the car, um, because if we carry too much speed, we run out of track, uh, run wide, and we end up on the grass, and it's just not gonna be good for you or anyone else for that matter. So what we are gonna do while we're in all the way up the gears is, as you can see, I've just gone past it, and I'm starting to brake. Now, originally, I hold my line. I stay straight because I'm obviously opening up the right-hander. No need for me to be all the way over to the left. Um, it's just... If you move any more over, you're risking yourself touching the grass, uh, the left wheels on the grass. So where I am is just fine. Now you'll see, I'm only applying about half brake here um, because I don't want to completely pull the car up. I just want to slow it down slightly because I want to carry as, as much men momentum as I can through here. So I've shifted down into fifth and then down into fourth. And then as I've shifted down into fourth, that is when I'm releasing off of the brake, um, as you can see. So as I've started to turn in, I'm releasing off the brake, trail braking now. And our aim is to hit this apex. And we don't want to get over the curb. We don't want to be on the curb because it bobbles the car. Worst case scenario, you can spin out. Um, but more times than often, um, it's just slows you down. It's just not the quickest route. As I've said a number of times, the LMP2 car does not like curbs. So we're trail breaking all the way around, and then you can see here with my throttle inputs that I am getting on the throttle quite early here before I've even reached that apex. You can see here. Now, FYI guys, this is a quality setup. Uh, I've got very little fuel. My tires are up to, temp up to temperature. So this is optimum scenario right about now. Um, if you've got a full tank of fuel, cold tires, i.e. specifically at the start of the race, uh, you're gonna be trail braking for a little bit longer, waiting till you're more round the apex, more round the corner before you get on the throttle because You've just got more weight, less grip, and the car's gonna want to drift out to the left more, um, and you're more at risk of running wide. So this is optimum line. Uh, so when you've got those, all those things in check, you can see here, I'm applying the throttle, and then as I hit the corner of the apex, that's when I'm on full throttle. Trust the downforce, trust the grip, and then your car will stick to the middle of the track, just like blue. Now, we're gonna be holding the middle of the track and moving the car over to the right-hand side. Now, we're not swinging it all the way over to the right-hand side as we come up the hill to open up the left-hander into the kink, because uh, we're going so fast, things happen very quickly. There's not enough time for us to open to move all the way over to the right hand side and then bring the car back in. You'll just, you won't end up on the optimum racing line. Um, so we wanna be holding middle right side of the track, as you can see here, the crack uh, that runs through the middle of the track. And then we start to turn left. If for a reference point, not that I really use it because I'm always kind of looking um, to the track moving around to the left here, but you can see if you want a visual visual uh, reference to your positioning, the car, the middle of the car is kind of in, at this pole, I'd say, just in between the gap of the two trees. That's really whereabouts you want to be. So as we move up the track, we are now heading into sector two. The sector where your race is either gonna be lost, gained, uh, it's just a, it's just a horrible little sector, to be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a big fan of it, 
but it makes Road Atlanta what it is. So in this car, we are traveling very fast and the next couple of corners are blind. So we're coming up a crest. Now, in most situations, as I just roll it forward, you will see this white line. And we will, if we're in a GT3 or GTE car, we break kind of just before it. Um, F3 cars, we're breaking on it. Most cars, you're breaking quite close to that white line. With this LMP2 car, you'd think that would be the same because we're traveling faster, we're lighter, we'd have the same braking capabilities, but we don't. We have a much longer braking zone or much longer braking in general. So we have to start braking, as you can see, quite a way before this green and white curb on the left-hand side even comes into view. This is where a lot of practice is kind of required. Uh, it took me a little while to to bring myself um, to consistently to br uh, break earlier and to just get the timing of it right because then the right-hander of the kink is also blind as well. You can't see it. So you have to judge your braking and your turning points. But back to the break, the first initial braking marker. So where am I braking? What do I look out for? The answer is, is that I don't really have a visual braking marker. I don't have anything on the left or right that I'm keeping an eye out of. I'm just looking in front of me in the middle of the track. And as I've said, I've kind of just got a general feel of it now. But what I do is we're coming up this hill and you, you'll see at a more faster pace as you come over the crest and the ground starts to level out. It happens very quickly, but that is my braking marker. Uh, that is when I know to start braking. So just as you come over the crest and you're on the flat surface, that is when you then start to hit the braking. There we go. Now, the reason we've moved over to the right, as you can see, is that we've opened up this left-hander so that we can stick tight to this without actually getting on the curb to open up the very fast kink. Now, all the while I'm breaking through here. Now, this right hand of the kink, you can take it in third gear. I've seen some people take it in third. Uh, I personally like to shift down into second. I just generally like uh, second gear in this car for the slower corners because I generally do have quite good throttle control compared to others. And the torque and acceleration you get from second gear in this car just outweighs the speed that you can carry through um, in thirds but of course it's all about consistency as well it's just not about pure raw pace um, especially in race trim and race scenarios uh, especially with Petit Le Mans coming up that's a, that's a 10 hour endurance race it's more about consistency because this sector is where you're going to see the majority of people I'd say 90% of crashes and incidents are going to be in this sector um, so yeah it's not only about going through here quickly, but also consistently and avoiding those off tracks and those spins. So where am I looking here? Where are my reference points? As I've said, it's another blind corner. Uh, we can't see the actual kink. We know the way the track falls, but we can't actually see it, even in VR. So my turning point is the end of this green and white curb on the left-hand side. That is when I know I need to start turning in. Now you'll see I shift down into seconds just as I start to turn in. And from practice, once again, I know generally how how the how the lay of the track is, how it falls, and how much steering input to put in. Now, if you haven't practiced a lot, you may struggle with the initial steering input. You may put too much. You may overshoot it, not turn into early enough. So practice is required here. And once you've got your steering input correct, as you can see, I'm trail braking at the moment. Yes, I'm kind of riding the throttle. It's a little bit cheeky of me. I don't really want to do that. But our aim here is to get our two right wheels over this curb, over the square patch that you can see here. This is the optimum entry into this corner. Um, if we go at this, uh, if we ran a little bit wide and we went this angle or we went over a little bit, little bit too shallower, turned in too early, the car 
bobbles up and down quite considerably and you lose a lot of traction, which means a loss of speed. The traction control kicks in. Um, if you try and get your foot down on the throttle too quickly as well, the car can spin. So it's not, you need to make sure that if that does happen, you are easy on the throttle, allow the car to settle before you properly put your foot down. But here, we pretty much nailed it. I'm now starting to apply a bit on the throttle. And the car goes up and down, but settles pretty quickly. So I know in an instant that I can get my foot down on the floor and just plant it and trust that grip. Now I've said before that the curbs around here are a little bit tricky and that we want to stay off them. This curb here is the perfect example. Very easy to carry too much speed through the kink and get up on this curb here. Now, if you do, be ever, ever so careful. In an ideal world, we do not want to be on this curb. There is little to no grip on here. We can't ride it like we can in the GT3s or GTEs. Um, for some reason, the LMP2, it just, not that it unsettles the car, it runs along it quite nicely. Um, it doesn't bobble up and down. It's just, there's no grip um, with these cars for some reason. So if you get up on it, be careful, make sure you get back onto the onto the black stuff as quick as you can. And, and as we said, in an ideal world, as you can see here, you're sticking as tight as you can to it while full throttle. So that is the kink navigated through. Hopefully you guys can get through there quickly, but most importantly, safely. Because we now come down into the second part of sector two. Yep, sector two isn't over and done with yet. And I would say this is where the majority of your crashes are gonna happen, especially early on in the race. So as we were in uh, qualifying trim, low fuel, grippy tires um, as they're up to temperature, we can go through here full throttle. Nice and easy, no issue at all. It is flat out all the way until you're braking down here. Start of the race, you need to be careful need to be careful so much. Even when you're coming out of qualifying uh, and you're doing your outlap, the tires are so slippery. Um, if you try and go through here in full throttle, you'll just spin. And there's nowhere for you to go. Uh, you're just gonna carry the speed through. You may come back on track and ruin other people's races. So at the start, uh, uh, some lifting is required um, as you go down these hills just until you get those heat in those tires. And then you can commit to it and be full throttle so just uh yeah be wary there guys and on some tracks we can go 100 percent from the outgo but this isn't one of them so back to the task at hand we are moving slightly over to the left here as the track falls down to the right now you will see some people move all the way over to the left but that's not really ideal as i said before as we're coming up the hill if we move everything's happening so quickly because of how fast you're going there's not enough time for us to swing it out left and then swing it back right you're just going to miss the apex on the right hander entirely so once again we want to be middle left of the track middle center middle left center should i say and then it's full throttle all the way down keeping it tight to these curbs yes you can get up on it Ideally not, uh, it was a little bit naughty of me, shall we say, because you can see the car bouncing up and down. Same as that one. And then we come into probably uh, the most difficult corner on the track. And if anyone has raced around Road Atlanta, you'll know why it's because of the exit, because the curbs that run up here on the exit of the, this corner are so, highly raised. If you overshoot this corner and carry too much speed, your race is over and done with. So where are we braking? As I stated before, up the hill, we've got quite a long braking um, in this car. So in most cars, we'd be braking on the edge of this curb, but we can't do that in, in the LMP2. So as you can see, I'm, I'm coming off the throttle way before I'm even approaching the curb and you'll also notice I'm a little bit wider of the curb as well 
as I've said, ideally don't want to get on this because it's raised. So I'm trying to get the entry here so that I'm running along the flat part of this curb. So if we get, as the corner starts to straighten out, it also starts to level out. And that is a nice point for us to get on the curb and it opens up the left-hander. Now, this is actually a corner that I lost probably two to three temps on uh, quite easily, uh, even though it looks quite, um, looks quite well that I got through here or that I got through here quite well, um, I actually lost quite a bit of time. So in an ideal scenario, I would have liked to have been up on this curb a little bit more and traveled the curb just a little bit longer. Um, I come off the, I turned in a little bit too early and I also carried too much speed. Um, so by carrying too much speed, got on the throttle a little bit too early well, actually, I got on the throttle at the right time, but because I was carrying a little bit too much speed, I just ran a little bit wide and hit the curb before it flattens out. It's fine margins because you can see here is where it's flat and here it's slightly raised. And I got through this and it unsettles the car. As you can see, it's moving from side to side there and you just lose traction and speed. Whereas in an ideal scenario, I went through there a little bit slower on the brakes. I'm able to travel the car up the inside here. If I do get my wheels on the curb, I'm getting it on the flat portion of the curb, of the runoff, and then carry that speed all the way down into the next corner. But let's go back to the actual left-hander itself. So as I said, in an ideal world, you want to be running along this curb um, a little bit longer than I was applying the brake. This, for me personally, was a corner that I had to get my head around that you really have to slow the car down a lot more um, than you would um, in, an, in another car, in an F3 car or even a GTE car. That's just my general feeling, um, which I have found with uh, this LMP2. It's, it's more of, it is definitely slow in fast out because the acceleration on this car is just phenomenal. So we want to stay off of this curb. GTEs, you'll see, you'll be able to cut this curb. GT3s as well. But we want to stay off of it, keep it as tight as we can. And then as you can see here, you, as you're coming around, as the curb then starts to kind of move round up the track, that's when you get back on the throttle. and then floor it all the way through. Now, as I said, you want to stay off this. Ideally, you want to stay off these curbs. Um, so many people you're going to see are going to overshoot this, hit the curbs further back down the track where they're severely raised. They're going to just shoot off like a missile into the wall or they're going to come back onto the track and spin. So it's going to be, if you're starting from the back of the track um, or back of the grids in the LMP2s, just be careful. I'd say just, just hang back a little bit and just see what happens in front of you, uh, just so you've got plenty of time to react to anything that happens. Because I can, I'd probably say eight to nine times out of 10, someone is gonna go off here on the first couple of laps. So we're gonna play it down. It's a nice short straight here. Um, the it's another prime overtaking opportunity, so that's why it's also important to ensure you get such a good exit out of that last corner, because if you do, you've got a nice overtaking opportunity here into the double right-handers. And what we keep an eye out for is we've got the 200 ball marker on our left, but we're not really gonna be looking at that because it's too far on our left-hand side. We're gonna be looking at the white line in the middle of the track that runs perpendicular to it, because that is our braking marker, as you will see. I'm high on the brakes here. And we shift down into third gear. Don't shift down into second because it just pulls the car up too much. So it's quite a nice corner here to carry the speed through. Little bit of trail braking. 
we're keeping it as tight to this curb as possible, all the while staying off of it. And then as you can see, my throttle input, I get on the throttle, nice and early. Full throttle, as you can see, allowing the car to drift out to the left-hand side. Now, the next corner comes up on you very, very quickly in the LMP2s. And we will be braking as you've pretty much, by the time you've straightened out the steering wheel, you're braking. Um, so there isn't really a visual braking marker here. It's as you straighten out the steering wheel, you then start to brake. And the key here is to carry a nice roll through this sharp right hander. So once again, it is a blind right-hander, um, so you may may not get this right every single time. In VR, I have the benefit of being able to look into the corner so I can judge it a lot better than those who are on single monitors. But you just kind of just have to try your best here. You're better off to run slightly wide than you are to go over the curb here. Um, so do not touch this. The, the curb is a no-go uh, because it is so severely raised so severely raised that the car just bobbles up. I've never seen it bobble up so much and down before. And we've got a nice long back straight here, which is the prime overtaking opportunity. You'll just be a sitting duck. You'll either lose so much time to the guy who's in front of you, or you'll just be a sitting duck to the guys behind. So we are gonna shift down into first here. So for you guys who don't really have, uh, don't really know when your turning point is and you're struggling with this corner, I start to turn just before this red and white curb starts to end. That's pretty much my turning point here. Now, I did now this corner. Um, this is the best. This is the the best, but I've taken this corner out of any other laps I've run. Um, so this is the prime turning point here. Shifting down into first, trail breaking through. As you can see, we are tight to this curb without actually getting on it. And then as soon as we hit that apex, we're back on the throttle, but we're easing our way back on the throttle because it's the tightest corner on the track. We, uh, the traction control can, can kick in. Um, so we have to be careful that we don't get our foot on the throttle too quickly because if the rear wheels start to slide, then the traction control start to kick in and you can see I had a little bit of movement a little bit of oversteer there uh, but we're using all the track you can get up on this curb if need be but once again be careful on the throttle as you're coming off of it because there's not a lot of grip on there and then we're going to press play and play it all the way down into the last couple of corners Move the car over to the right hand side, covering as little track as possible. And then we come down to the last couple of corners. Now what we are keeping an eye out for is the 100 ball marker. And as you can see with my throttle inputs just there, I'm braking just before it. Um, I found that if you brake on the actual 100 ball marker, um, you just lock up your tires um, and you run wide. So we have to brake a little bit before it. Quite a lot of brake there. Um, this is the harshest braking zone on the track because we're carrying so much speed. And we're shifting down into second here. And you can see that I'm starting to turn into this corner just as I've reached this last white line. Trail breaking through. Now this is a corner that everyone knows that you can cut quite considerably. Um, you do have to be careful because it is quite easy as well um, to get a slowdown here. Uh, more than often than not, you maybe take a 1x. If you're under a lot of pressure and you want to gain just that little bit of extra time, you can cut this a little bit more. Um, it is quite a, 
you do have to take chop off quite a lot of the corner to get a slowdown. Um, so more often than not, you can um, take a sneaky 1x just to give yourself that little bit of a breathing space down into uh, the run into the first uh, start finish straight. So we're trail breaking all the way through here. That corner is where so much time can be gained. Uh, if you're wondering why someone is gaining so much time on you in the last sector, it is because of that corner. It's just because they've cut it more than you have and they've trail braked through it, so it's carried more speed. So as I've come through it, you can see my, oh, I'm getting back on the throttle again. I'm not full throttle, about halfway through because the right, this one comes up on you very quickly. We can slightly take this corner, um, slightly get our wheels on this curb. In a lot of the other cars, you can run up this curb a lot more um, and actually cut the, uh, the, the dirt off here. But this car just uh, gets unsettled. If you try that, I've tried it a number of times and spun. So we only slightly want to dip our wheels onto that curb. But as you can see, my throttle inputs here, I'm ever so slightly on the throttle. And then as I've come off of it and I'm back on the track, I'm straightening up steering and then I'm getting back on the throttle as quick as I can, pretty much, to ensure I get that drive. Allow the car to move over to the left-hand side. It runs nice and smooth on this runoff here. And then we allow the car to move over to the right, covering as little track as possible, slightly over the pit entry. Following pretty much the optimum racing line here. Middle of the track, keeping it tight to this red and white curb, red and green curb, sorry, on the right hand side. And then across the line. And there we go guys, that is a flying lap around Road Atlanta. I really hope uh, that's given you some insight into uh, the breaking points, turning points of this track. Short, but tricky. As I've said, outright pace is really only essential in qualifying mode. Um, your qualifying is gonna be very important here. And then from then on, of course, pace is always key. Of course it is, it's the aim of the game in in uh, racing, but after those first couple of laps, as soon as the traffic starts to come into play, it is about being smart, waiting for those op opportunities to overtake on the straights, um, in safe areas, and ultimately just being safe yourself and making sure you keep that car on the track. A lot of races are gonna be won this week and lost by people going off the track and just making mistakes. Uh, it's very easy to do so. One small lapse in concentration round here can cost you. And yeah, that's speaking from experience. But yeah, guys, I hope you have a great week at IMSA this week and also enjoy Petit Le Mans. I uh, personally won't be competing in that next year, maybe. But hopefully for you LMP2 drivers, this helps you out and I hope you have good results. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hope you enjoy it. Let me know how your races go this week. And I will see you for the next one. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button, guys.